Welcome to the November 2022 Sky Report. I'm Patrick So. Daylight saving time ends on November 6 when we turn our clocks back one hour. It will be dark one hour earlier in the evening as the sun will set earlier than the previous day. Looking to the evening sky, Saturn is visible in the southwest in the faint constellation Capricornus the sea goat. Capricornus is best seen far from city lights. Our telescope demonstrator Anthony Perkick took this time exposure picture of Saturn from a dark sky location where the faint stars of Capricornus are conspicuous. To the east of Capricornus is the faint autumn constellation Pisces Austrinus, the southern fish. Formahal is the brightest star in this constellation. On the 4th, the 11-day-old waxing gibbous moon is just under 4 degrees from the bright planet Jupiter. Jupiter dominates the sky throughout the month. It's high above the southern horizon in the middle of the month and sets around 2 a.m. PST. Jupiter is in the constellation Pisces the Fishes, close to the circle of faint stars known as the Circlet of Pisces. To the east-northeast, amongst the bright winter stars, is the red planet Mars. Mars has been brightening steadily over the last few months as the Earth moves closest to it on our inside track orbit. Mars is low in the eastern sky around 8 p.m. It's in Taurus the Bull, located closest to the tip of the right horn of the bull between Orion and Auriga. Looking north in the morning sky, the Big Dipper has risen to its standing position with its handle pointed downwards. The Big Dipper, also known as the Plough in the United Kingdom, is a useful navigational tool. The two stars in front of the bowl, Duby and Merak, point to Polaris, the North Star. The Leonid meter shower peaks on the night of the 17th to the morning of the 18th. The peak hour is from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. on the morning of the 18th. The Leonids radiate from the sickle in the constellation Leo the Lion. Under a clear dark sky, 18 meteors per hour are expected. There is a total lunar eclipse in the early hours of the morning of November 8th. The lunar eclipse is visible from Asia, Australia, Pacific and the Americas. A total lunar eclipse happens when the moon moves into the darkest part of the Earth's shadow, the umbra, and darkens for just over an hour. From Los Angeles, the moon moves into the lightest part of the Earth's shadow, the penumbra, a minute after midnight Pacific Standard Time. During this time, the moon fades slightly. Its eastern side is a little darker as the moon moves closer to the umbra. At 1.09 a.m. PST, the east side of the moon moves into the umbra. The moon is noticeably darker on its east side. This is the beginning of the partial phase of the lunar eclipse. At 2.16 a.m. PST, totality begins when the moon is within the umbra. At 2.59 a.m. PST, greatest eclipse occurs. The moon takes on a reddish tone from sunlight refracted by the Earth's atmosphere from all the world's sunrises and sunsets. From the vicinity of the moon, the Earth is surrounded by a bright reddish ring of refracted sunlight. Totality ends at 3.42 a.m. PST when the moon moves out of the umbra. At 4.49 a.m. PST, the moon leaves the umbra completely. The eclipse is over at 5.58 a.m. PST. The duration of the lunar eclipse is 3 hours and 40 minutes. The moon is totally eclipsed for 1 hour and 25 minutes. The next total lunar eclipse from Los Angeles is March 13, 14, 2025. Weather permitting, Griffith Observatory will broadcast the eclipse live from our telescope on the roof. Please join us on Eclipse Night to watch our broadcast online. The link to our website is griffithobservatory.org. Our moon phases this month. Full moon is the 8th, last quarter is the 16th, new moon is on the 23rd, and first quarter is on the 30th. And that's all for this month's Sky Report. Until next time, cheerio!